welcome or welcome back to my channel if you're new here i am rowena robinson i am your boss babe queen and if you're not new here thank you so much for rocking with us thank you for coming back now in this video i'm going to do something a bit different i call all my subscribers boss babe for me a boss is anyone that's just going out there trying to better themselves trying to continuously improve themselves and get to a place in life where they're satisfied you know you're all bosses all right so in this video i thought why not do something that can help out my bosses so this video is dedicated to anyone who is applying for a job right now anyone who's looking to apply and just want to know about the whole process make sure you stay tuned please make sure that you are subscribed please make sure that you click the notification bell and let me know like what your job um, hunting experience has been so far this video is gonna be dedicated to the job interview process so how do you move from a space where you apply for the job straight throughout until you get the offer right all right so this is gonna be like a four or five step interview process bear in mind that it can vary obviously it's not the set structure but this is for example if you have just got a uni and you want to secure a placement and you don't know how the whole process will be for some companies as i've said it may differ but this is the standard thing to expect the first thing that you want to do when you're going to apply for a job is ensure that you have a cv your cv needs to be clear needs to be concise it should show off like your best attributes your cv needs to be customized to the job that you're applying to one of my earlier mistakes was that i used to have one regular cv and we just sent it to everybody what i found was that after i started to customize my cv for each job my responsiveness from the other employees yeah it increased because they now see that you're willing to fit them perfectly like your cv screams the characteristics that they're looking for and i find whenever i do that obviously they they tend to prefer you more because it's like oh yeah you're literally made for this company in it so what you want to do is and it's very simple look through the job description see what are these people looking for um the characteristics because in every job description they'll say okay you will be or the person that was fit for this job will have these and way 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 you see all those words that they use the person will be passionate have a drive to succeed this this you see all those words fit them in somewhere if they say okay this person needs to have um a passion for social media say for example you're applying to be a social media manager or social media assistant executive whatever you need to show that okay yeah i've done this um um even in your interest section you can put okay social media en enthusiast with over this this experience listen anything that is there in the job description you need to put it because you want them when they pick up your little cv you want them to be like yeah she's made for here i want this person this person is doing all these th yes right here that's what you want them to say all right so customize it i mean like put the actual description of the person from the from the job description into your cv and you want to highlight relevant experience so relevant experience meaning experience that directly would help you in this position so if i'm gonna apply for a social media manager i'm not gonna put that oh yeah um i worked in the food industry and i did dna testing like even though that was a part of your past experience right now in a needed yes so you might want to put say oh you know i work in the food industry so as i said the, the work experience won't change but what you highlight will change so you work in the industry has there ever been a time where you help with a social media strategy if that if the, there was then yes you want to put that instead so instead of the dna some because you know food industry they might work on i did dna testing when i was doing food industry that's why i'm bringing up these things but whenever i am applying for whatever i make whatever experience i have relevant I highlight the relevant roles okay so pick choose and refuse 
so social media manager you might want to say oh yeah i conducted social media research um i made sure that i increased seo i was able to um analyze analytics and Im implement a strategy to boost or engagement whatever it is make it relevant all right so then you and then also you can look at different cvs um of like say for the particular role they're applying to just to see how yours would match up and they have free cv review sites as well i found those really helpful because they then can say okay yes you sound your tone sounds like this or no you need to improve this because this does not show that you have management skills or whatever so if you have access to any free cv websites or review websites take advantage of that because you want to see because they will word it for you differently and say okay you could say this and that will push whatever more because what you need to also understand is that nowadays cvs for like the big companies and stuff they go through an automated system in the initial stage a person won't actually be reading your cv for majority of the cases it will be automated system that literally goes through and see check um on your the language you use your experiences whatever and see if you're relevant and they will rank you oh management um management potential 50 this yeah I've seen it and it's a CV review site that actually taught me that. They taught me how, you know, automated um, CV reviewing goes. So when you understand that, you have to remember that you need to use keywords that a machine will think, oh, yeah, like you sound like you could be high potential. Ensure that you pushing out the best characteristics. You're highlighting your best self. All right. Don't say I sell yourself. You know, your CV is literally like a price tag. You're selling yourself. So make sure that it is different as well. I catch in because sometimes if it's not a machine, sometimes it's humans like reading it, obviously. So then you want your CV to stand out. You want you know what it blah blah blah. It needs to stand out. And again, it is also relevant to the job. If you're gonna apply for a marketing position, for example, your CV needs to show me that you know, you can actually market because your CV is that you selling yourself. So I need to see how. Hmm, can you do this whatever, whatever so you need to be nice and different because everybody is a come with them you know and it's not just you alone apply for the job everybody else so your cv needs to rank up there but whereas if you're applying for like an accounting manager it yeah creativity aspect wouldn't come too much in it because we're looking for somebody who's gonna do our numbers and make sure it's the way ledgers them balance and ray 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 you got me make sure so the profit and loss statement and the other financial statements are good so right now we don't need to be creative we need it to be clear concise and sure say you have obvious experience that i should entrust you with my books so that you know follow accurate procedures and stuff so cv is definitely one area that you need to look into and make sure that you can do the best CV as possible. You can have a standard CV and then that is that one CV you can then change to different things. So like say I have a, a standard CV, I then have a CV that if I'm applying for marketing positions, I use that one. If I'm applying for business management positions, I use that one. If I'm applying for admin role, I use this one because in each each CV, I would highlight a different thing. Once the CV is now out of the way and you're cleared, you're going to apply to the job not every job asks for a cover letter and i absolutely love those ones because cover letter in itself i find is another thing that that you have to definitely sit down and think what you write your cover letter needs to be a balance between you tell us about yourself and telling me why like i should choose you and then also tell me why i want to work there so it's kind of like me, I boost up myself and then me if you boost up your company. No, because me if you tell us, yo, your company, I've always wanted to work at Sinecars Limited because, you know, you are top um, of the pack in terms of technology and innovation. Da, 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 da. Yeah. So me, I don't really like doing that. I'd rather have do that in the interview stage when we go do pop-up of our research, right? At the beginning, I'm just like... 
don't need to help me yet when me know something get a little shot when me say oh yeah you get an interview or whatever then i like to do the in-depth stuff but in the initial initial stage i don't i personally don't like that but there are some companies that require it from you and when they require it from you the same thing you do to your cv you need to do it to the cover letter you need to make sure that that cover letter is selling you and to sell you the, your knowledge of the company and everything but it just happened at a very early stage and there are a lot of templates out there there are a lot of videos out there you can definitely check those out if you apply to the job with a cover letter and cv or cv alone you should get a confirmation email to say okay yes we've received your application thank you for considering us we will get back to you at a later date if you're successful right so and some job will tell you that due to the high number of applicants that we've gotten we are not able to give you a personal feedback on why you weren't accepted but if you haven't heard back from us in two weeks please um accept that you have not been considered for this role so with some jobs you won't get any feedback as to why you weren't selected with some you will let's just appreciate for a moment as well that not every job decline is bad especially the ones that you get feedback because they help you to understand why you, you, you never match up you never rank up and you can use that feedback as a good form of improving yourself you know constructive criticism you know it's, it's it's okay sometimes if they say okay you lack leadership potential why is that when you know so you can't lead probably my tone is very passive you know probably many to say this more or whatever so then you can develop on that so i particularly like jobs where, that tell you why they didn't choose you either get an email or say no we didn't consider you or yes you consider you also you may get a call like 30 minutes later to say hi do you have um five minutes to speak about the role now and you want to be in a position where you can yes but i also understand that it's okay if you are not in a position so you can be like okay no i'm sorry i'm unavailable at the moment can we reschedule for tomorrow but always remain professional okay because at the end of the day they never really booked with you so they can't kill you if right now you're, you're not ready so and if it, if you're nervous as well for me i usually take them majority of the times but if i'm nervous on the occasion that i'm nervous i'm not ready yet i'm never really fully reading into my company yet especially if you're one of them ones that are sending out beer applications as well you want to then you want to do some research you need to make sure say so you understand where they're coming from so make sure so you listen when she say hi good morning i'm coming from Snickers Limited, um, are you just submitted an application? Are you available for interview now? If you remember what Snickers Limited do and whatever, do not take the interview now. No, you don't want to have no local conversation now. You just want to reschedule and do research. So tomorrow, anything they throw at you, you're ready. Prior preparation prevents poor performance. That's that with a call. If you get an email confirmation to say, okay, hi, we have reviewed your CV and we are pleased to say you have now advanced to the next step. The new links that you need to go book your own um, interview date and stuff. So in the UK, that's what a lot of them are doing. Click on the link, go set up a profile. You want to do that in advance. You don't want to do that on the date. Go set up your profile, click the day when, you're, when you feel like you'll be ready to do the interview and stuff. And, that. and if not, they will sometimes also tell you that okay so your interview is gonna be this 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 whatever whatever um and you have to be ready before the interview you have to search i recently did an interview and um in i had researched every like i thought everything but i didn't i didn't research their customers <laughs> so we did a video interview and i will touch into the different types of interview later but after i sent you my cv and they loved it i did a video interview but it was a one-way video interview again i will discuss that later in one of the questions they had asked me to, um to tell them about their customers now in all my years of having interviews i have never no one has ever said to me Tell me about the customers. I've heard about competitors. Tell me why you want to work for the company. Tell me about yourself. Tell me about da 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 da. Never, never about customers. 
So, do your research. Now, after your research, it's the actual interview. Interviews can be video interview, telephone interview, or in-person interview. Obviously, in-person, as the name suggests, would mean that we are in the same room. I love those interviews because you can see them. You can see that they can read their body language. You can read the tone of the room and just if, you know, any little quick glimpse somewhere out of it, you can read that. In person, you can, you have a lot of non-verbal communication cues that you can pick up on. Obviously, due to the COVID situation, that's no longer taking place for majority of the cases. So we have this virtual interview, video interview. Video interview can be either one way or two way. It's a one-way video interview that means the questions are there and you literally are given an instruction manual. Um, for each question, you have a minute to read and think about your answer and then it starts going, it starts recording. For some of those interviews, you can re-record yourself. But be mindful because for some others, you are not able to re-record yourself. They, they'll send you the login details and the link on you know the platform that they use for the interviews. Um, you'll probably get a little tutorial on how the interview platform operates and then the instructions there's one question at a time like four in total one question at a time one minute when the question comes up i need to read the question understand it and think about my answer because when that one minute is up my answer is being recorded and it will tell you that okay it's going to record for two minutes and stop or one minute and stop you need to be mindful of that because you don't want to be blabbing you need to record what you need to say and you need to be concise with it because once that minute stops and especially if you're not able to re-record that's going to be submitted to them and you move on to the next question it's the same procedure so be mindful of video interviews be make sure you read all the instructions carefully before you attempt to do it all right and the last interview is telephone interview your mobile phone or your home phone whatever um contact details that you have given so they reach out to you and it's okay because at least it's not daunting um you're not seeing people i mean in face to face and video interviews sometimes can be a bit daunting but the fact that you're not seeing them you know you have latitude to probably have your thing in front of you your booklet in front of you whereas with the um personal interview you can't have that if it's a two-way video interview because it's on a screen you can even split your screen have the, the your little answers over here and you can read off the screen but it will look like you're talking to the camera because you're looking on the screen still so there's ways of going around it look at tips and tricks if you want to see me do a video of tips and tricks of how to like hack a interview i can i can, I can do that like a post-it notes on yeah cool all right so that's the interview step as a first interview for a lot of um recruitment processes and applications they will do a second interview a second interview is different from the first interview in the sense that for the first interview it's quite general they will ask you oh tell me about yourself by the way when they ask you that question they don't really want to know that you have a pet dog and you, you yeah unless you apply for a vet all that question is is a glorified way of asking you how can you fit into my company they don't really want to know about you they want to know how can you and your attributes fit here so you need to tell them stuff about yourself that the company itself is interested in the second interview you now is going to be more in depth because most of you are you're, you're soon reaching you know? the second interview you, you don't submit your cv which was good you passed the first interview stage which was good so the second interview you now is going to be more in depth they want to see say you have the correct capability and skill set to do the job well because at the end of the day remember that as them as a company they're trying to see the best person for to complement their own company so out of all the people them and sometimes it's a lot to get hundreds of people applying for the one position for them to go through and pick on whatever whatever if you understand so they want to see that you are the right choice because of the hundreds why should i pick you that's where you want to make sure that you are best your your, your your the greatest capabilities and skills experience knowledge wisdom all them something to come through because in essence you're trying to tell them that you are the best out of everybody else here and you need to sell that 
so the, the second interview is going to go more in depth it's going to go about the company why do you want to work at the company make sure that you know the company values make sure that okay it's a company that appreciates diversity and inclusion you 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 say that and you talk to them about the fact that you love the company how they're dedicated to developing their employees and you love that you are given the latitude to you know go around rotational departments and you need to sell it so that's a second interview and after the interview stage you may or may not have an assessment day most assessment centers give two types of assessments one group exercise the second thing is one-to-one -one interview you now with somebody who is either working at a job or um interviewing on behalf of the company but a group interviews this is where it gets tricky because you need to have the right balance of leadership qualities whilst being also able to sit back and let others take the forefront they're trying to see your interpersonal skills they're trying to see that you're not always talking above everybody else like you are able to um get criticism you're able to get rebuttal you're able to handle it you're able to be nice to somebody they're looking at all those other things so some people just go and just want to take over everything no no you need to have that lovely balance in between everything and you need to address address people by their names you don't want to see them as competitors because you might portray like the negative attributes you might seem defensive or you might seem a loft or standoffish you don't want to do that so you want to be friendly see them as teammates because the first assessment that you're going to get as i said is a teamwork assessment it's a group assessment the next assessment is going to be your interview the one-to-one -one competency interview questions and stuff all right let me know if you want me to do a video on interview questions like the type of questions and how you can answer that let me know in the comments below Thank you guys for watching i hope this video was informative i hope that you learned something and let me know any questions down below i will be in my comment section as per usual and i will be replying to your comments so definitely type type and send them to me also feel free to send them to me on instagram as well follow my instagram account at rowena underscore robinson and i'll see you in another video make sure you like comment subscribe and share with a friend who you know that this information would benefit, okay? Thanks, guys, and see you.